You know, the Infinix 8 is one of those phones you're going to buy right now in the market for $100. And you're actually going to be happy with it. It has a good battery. You know, the build quality seems to be okay for the price. The only problem is that that software that runs on it is very buggy. But outside of that, you know, for a budget, you'll be good with this. So basically, we are going to go inside as usual to see what this phone is made up of. These budget phones are not so complex to tear down, you know. Almost anybody can do this. Of course, if you have a little technical background though. If you've watched my other teardown videos of these Techno and Infinix phones and these budget devices, you're gonna know that you only need two things to actually tear down this phone. You're gonna need a knife and a screwdriver. Star screwdriver, of course. First things first, I'm gonna use my pin and take out the SIM card tray. The SIM tray actually houses two nano SIM cards and a memory card slot. So the next thing is I'm gonna take my knife, create a space by the side, and then I'm just going to put my fingernails and carefully lift off the back frame or the back plastic frame of the main frame of the device. So as you can see, this thing is easier to open than you envisage. This is that plastic back cover that you see covering the phone. And as usual, what you're going to notice here is that it has some antennas at the top and some antennas at the bottom of the plastic case. If you've also watched my other teardown videos, you're going to notice that this thing actually looks like the back plastic cover on the Camon 11 Pro, the Camon 12, the Spark 4, and the rest of the other devices we've actually um, opened on this channel. So next up, we're going to take off the fingerprint reader here. And what you're going to notice is that this is the same kind of fingerprint reader that comes in almost every other techno phone like the um, Camon 12 and the rest of them that have also opened on this channel. I'm sure by now some of you will be wondering why the parts inside all of them techno, Infinix and ITEL devices usually look the same. First of all, these three phones um, or these three brands are made by the same company called Transion Holdings. Secondly, Transion's OEM is a company called Elephone. Now, if you don't know what OEM stands for, OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturers. Now, this is a company that you can approach and say you want a phone, they're actually going to make a phone for you. Elephone is one of the largest OEM companies in China. That is the reason why most Chinese phones actually look almost the same. That is why if you go to the Elephone website, you're going to find out that most of their phones actually look like most of the Infinix and Techno phones. That is because almost all of them use the same OEM companies to make these phones. Now, using OEM companies is a standard industry practice. It is nothing new, right? Take for instance, Apple doesn't make iPhones. iPhones are made by Foxconn. Apple only designs the devices, comes up with the ideas, comes up with the technology. But when it comes to the production, Foxconn actually handles that. Okay, let's keep it moving with the teardown. So there are actually six screws that are holding that top cover that is guarding the board, the earpiece and the other component of the device in place. So we're going to take that off. So this is just a large piece of plastic chunk that will hold everything in place. You can actually see that it also has some little network antennas up there. So next thing, we take out the glass that is actually holding the cameras into place. Again, it is the same thing you see on other Infinix and Techno phones. There is a single screw on the right side of the device close to the flashlight that is holding the board into place. So remember first thing first, always kill the power on the board by first of all removing the battery. Then we're going to go ahead and unclip the LCD connector and then we also unclip the connector that connects the sub board to the main board. Once that is done, you can lift off the board gently off the frame of the phone. And then I'm going to take my knife and carefully unclip the network cable from the board. And if you've seen other teardown videos, you're going to notice here that the board of this phone looks extremely similar to the other boards that we've looked at here. What you will also notice here is that they always lay this copper foil at the back of the chambers where those processors lie. Now, they can afford to use a copper coil like this because 
the uh, MediaTek processors don't overheat that much. Why? Because they don't really do much. So therefore, this device does not really require a lot of cooling. These are the camera sensors. Again, they look extremely similar to the previous ones. Outside of that, the board just looks extremely the same like what it has always been. But one thing is for sure here though, it's like they actually changed their mind at the last minute. You know, they were gonna add a fourth camera, I guess. That's why you see the other space for the camera there, but it was never used. Over at this side of the device, you're gonna see the LED ring lights. Now, these are just little LED lights that are just, were just soldered to the back of the panel. Pretty extreme idea. Back to the main carcass of the device here. There are actually six screws that are holding down the plastic panel down there that is guarding the speaker and the subboard into place. As usual, this is just a single speaker. Stereo speakers are not available on these budget devices. But wait a minute, I know most of you will be like, what is this stereo speaker thing you always talk about? Let me show you. You see, in a regular phone, sound only comes out from one point of the device, and that is usually at the bottom. Some um, designs will have the speaker at the back, some at the side. And so therefore, if you're actually playing a game or you're holding the phone and you block that speaker port, sound doesn't come out anymore. But on more advanced phones like maybe the iPhones or the Samsung Galaxy series or the Huawei Mate series that are high-end or mid-range phones, sound actually comes out of like four or five points on the device and that is usually around the side button. You have sound coming out at the earpiece point. Then under the device, like in the cases of the iPhones, you have sound coming out from the lightning connector and from um, the speaker points at the bottom of the device. So in English, what that means is that even if you block one part of the device where sound is coming out from, you're still going to be having sound blasting from different side of, um, sides of the device. To demonstrate this to you in real time, here's the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus I use as my daily phone. I'm just going to pull up one of my videos here from the Tech Overwatch channel. What you're actually going to observe in this demonstration is that sound is actually coming out from the main speaker at the bottom of the device and the earpiece also serves as a speaker. So let's keep it moving with the teardown of the phone. So check this out. The subboard setup here actually looks like that of the Tecno Camon 12, Camon 12 Pro, Camon 11 Pro, and even the Tecno Spark 4. It is exactly the same subboard that came in the Camon 11 Pro, the Camon 12, the Spark 4, and other Tecno devices with just a little tweak to it. You see, buying a new phone does not mean that those that have older phones are not up to date, man. Like, you can see the teardown of these phones I keep doing, mostly these Infinix and Techno phones. You will notice here that almost everything inside is the same thing. So man, if you still have your older devices, hold on tight to them. There's no rush. At the end of the day, the Infinix Hot 8 is actually held together by one main board, one sub board, four cameras, three at the back, one in front, one fingerprint reader, one SIM tray, one screen, one battery, one earpiece, and other components and pieces that hold the entire system together. If you want to see more teardown videos like this, please don't forget to subscribe, alright? So, as usual, you can check out other videos in the channel, and I'll catch you again in the next one.